So the president of the United States, who always talks about how much he loves law and order, once again just admitted that the United States government assassinated a U.S. citizen. He bragged about this at a rally. We sent in the U.S. Marshals. Took 15 minutes, it was over. 15 minutes, it was over. We got him. They knew who he was. They didn't want to arrest him. And 15 minutes, that ended. He just admitted to a crime. He just admitted that they violated the Constitution. This should outrage everyone who claims to be in favor of law and order, who claims to be in support of the U.S. Constitution. Because as a U.S. citizen, the U.S. government isn't supposed to be able to just assassinate you. That's what authoritarian regimes do. Extrajudicial killings are not supposed to be a thing that happens in civilized societies. But yet the President of the United States just bragged about their decision to just assassinate someone. Now I know that if you're a conservative, you're going to respond by saying, but the person that they assassinated killed someone else. Do you understand what due process is? If the U.S. government suspects that someone is culpable in any wrongdoing, that person is entitled to the right to defend themselves in a court of law. They can't just be assassinated by the U.S. government if the U.S. government suspects that they're guilty. That person has a right to use the judicial system that we have to try to defend themselves. And furthermore, even if you agree with the assassination, which you should not, if you just accept that the United States government can be able to do this, I mean, what if they get it wrong? What if they get the wrong person? What if it's just political retaliation? Do you understand why this opens the door to so many horrible situations? And again, it goes back to basic due process, something that as citizens we are entitled to. If you don't know what due process is, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia, when an actual service in time of war or public danger. So that's a lot of jargon, but at the end of the day, it means that if the government thinks that you did something illegal, they have to try you. They have to try a case against you present facts and evidence against you. They can't just unilaterally choose to end your life because they say that you did something wrong. They have to prove it. The person who they assassinated didn't have the chance to prove that maybe in that shootout between the uh, anti-fascist protesters and the far right, maybe that was self-defense. We don't know. That individual was denied the ability to defend himself in a court of law because Trump decided they wanted to assassinate him. They wanted to assassinate him because he is a political enemy. Now, this isn't the first time that the United States government has extrajudicially assassinated one of its own citizens. It's not the first time. Uh, but understand what Trump is doing and how he takes us further down this path towards authoritarianism. So actually, President Obama, who everyone loves, also assassinated a United States citizen. As Glenn Greenwald for The Intercept explains, Obama killed a 16-year-old American in Yemen. Trump just killed his 8-year-old sister. Now, this article explains how Obama directed the CIA to assassinate a U.S. citizen named Anwar Al-Awlaki. Now, his son, Abdul Rahman, was killed two weeks later by the United States. And then when Trump decided to greenlight a raid in Yemen on dubious intelligence, that led to the murder of Abdurrahman's sister, Nawar. So it's not a new phenomenon, right? The United States government has done this before, but understand why this is a little bit different. The U.S. government, when they killed U.S. citizens abroad, they can at least try to put up some facade that, look, Maybe these American citizens were associated with some terror cell and we had to take them out. We couldn't risk it. They can try to hold up that facade. And even if they don't explicitly say that, the American people will think, well, that person was in a different country where we're waging this war on terror. So maybe, you know, uh, maybe it's justified, even if it was unconstitutional. But when they start doing it here at home on American territory, that sends a different message. That's the U.S. government telling people Look what we did. 
We just assassinated a United States citizen. And guess what? You let us get away with it. So we can do it again. We're gonna do it again. Trump is bragging about this. So this isn't just some, you know, out of sight, out of mind thing because, oh, this bad thing happened. Our government shouldn't have done this, but it happened abroad. Now they're doing it at home. Now, if you are a conservative, just try to be objective for a moment. Consider that Biden was president and a conservative was plotting some sort of uh, attack, like wanted to kidnap the governor of Michigan. Let's just use this hypothetical situation. Um, and before they were able to carry out this terror attack, Biden decided to assassinate that individual. Do you think that it is legally and constitutionally justifiable for the Biden administration or any Democratic administration to just assassinate a right winger? No, this isn't about partisanship. This isn't about, oh, your team versus my team. This is about the Constitution. And if you genuinely believe in the rule of law and law and order and the Constitution, and you just don't care that Trump assassinated a United States citizen and is now bragging about it, which is the worst part, you have to understand. You don't support the Constitution. You're against it. And you are willingly accepting authoritarianism. So there isn't much that we can do about this, right? We can we can try to vote Trump out. But in terms of uh, how we can hold him accountable, we're not going to hold him accountable. And I'm more flabbergasted and disturbed by the fact that his supporters are trying to justify this action. <sighs> this is how democracies die. We're seeing it right now. We are seeing exactly what happens when a country moves further and further towards fascism. It starts out where an individual is democratically elected and just is uh, expressing fascism. He's a proto-fascist. And then we start moving closer and closer towards authoritarianism when that individual consolidates their power and starts carrying out more fascist acts. Like, we're seeing it all happen. This is how it starts, folks. This is how it starts. It's not like Trump is Hitler. Not saying that. But he is a fascist. And people need to take everything that he's saying here very seriously, because this is a threat to democracy.